Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to be talking about overcoming the illusion of free will as an evolutionary leap in human consciousness. Okay, before we do that, I briefly want to just go into why I'm doing the show and just a brief description of what we mean when we um, say free will. Basically, I, um, I predict, I would hope that um, as we overcome this illusion of that, we, that what we do and think and say and feel is up to us, that to the extent that we understand the true nature of, of our human will, then we can create a, a more intelligent, more compassionate, more understanding world, you know, both personally and um, society globally. And um, so the idea is like, you know, briefly, when we say that we have a free will, it means that our, you know, what we're saying is that our decisions are completely up to us, that, um, that nothing that we've learned in the past can, um, can influence that, our decision, no, nothing in our genes can influence our decisions. And um, one way to understand how, you know, it is an illusion, that, you know, it's just impossible for that to be, is that, um, for example, in science, in biology, uh, in psychology, there's, um, there was this debate for, for decades, really, on whether um, human will was the result of nature or nurture, okay, whether, whether um, our genes was responsible for our behavior as we ascribe to most other animal forms, or whether, um, whether our upbringing, our environment, our, you know, <laughs> the kinds of experiences we've had in the past. And this debate, I think, you know, was pretty active for decades. And then ultimately the, the answer was, well, it's both. You know, every, every decision we make, everything we do is a product of both nature and nurture, of both heredity and environment. But the key thing to understand there is, like, it's not nature, nurture, and a free will, heredity, <coughs> environment, and a, a free will. You know, free will is not part of that, you know, because, like, obviously free will, if, if nature and nurture are combining to, um, to cause our every um, decision, that's a, completely, um, that's a complete description of, of the behavior. There, there's no room for, for a third cause. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> the idea is like, you know, we humans have been around, um, what is it, about four million years? They keep finding somebody who's older. You know, before it was Lucy, I, I, and so I don't know, we're, we're about four million years old. And, you know, we've gone through a lot of evolution during these four million years. We've gotten taller, we, we walk more upright, we've gotten more intelligent, our brains have become bigger, um, we've lost a lot of hair, just a lot of stuff. <laughs> and and um, and so, like naturally, as our human physiology has evolved, so has our brain. So has our mind. Okay, especially our mind has especially evolved. You know, during this last century, this last half century. But um, but you know, over like over the the last centuries, the last couple of millennia, for example, um, we had notions like, for example, regarding women. We we um, I mean. The notion still survives to a certain extent now, but it's much, much less than it was in the past. The idea that women were just incompetent, that they, they were unintelligent, that they were, you know, in, in Judaism, traditional Judaism, um, I, I was an Orthodox, I practiced Orthodox Judaism for a while. Um, there was like a law forbidding the teaching of, of the Torah to women because they would like corrupt it, <laughs> you know. So there was, there was like, you know, so basically we've, we've evolved, you know, our minds evolved uh, in terms of like how we see each other, how we see ourselves, you know. Um, and, um, and so we're, we're, you know, as part of this evolution, we're, we're gaining a better perspective a better understanding of who we are in in this world, in this universe. For example, like, you know, hundreds of years ago, we thought that the Earth was the center of, like, the solar system and the center of the world and, the, you know, all that. Now we know we're just like a tiny little planet, you know, among one of billions of other galaxies in this 
immense reality that um, that we can't even fathom whether it's eternal or not, or infinite or not, and eternal or not. You know, it's um, it's amazing. But um, so we, we you know we've come to to understand our place better in it, and um, and as I said, you know there have been increases to our intelligence, and um, we've we we've, we've learned to. to get along with each other better. We learn to, you know, to form societies, to form groups. We can walk out, you know, in most places without, you know, any kind of like arms or anything. We trust each other. We have we have a civilization. And um, so so you know, it's taken us this this far, but you know our world definitely has problems and um, and a lot of the problems stem from the way we see ourselves and each other, you know, from, from actually how we perceive our human will to be. In other words, like, this notion that we have a free will, that we, you know, that our decisions are completely up to us, has, has, um, is the premise for our entire civilization. I mean, it's the premise for our entire legal system of holding people accountable, you know, they're criminal, they're bad, they need to be punished. It's the, the premise and foundation of our socioeconomic system, of uh, socioeconomic system of, of rewards and punishments. Like if somebody does something really, really good, then we say, well, they did it of their own free will. They deserve, um, you know, a greater reward than others who, who you know, who couldn't, whatever. So, um, and, and more so than that, it, the notion of free will, the illusion of free will, affects our relation to ourself and the people closest to us. Um, there, you know, we were made imperfect um, in many ways. You know, the, the the matter of free will aside, we just um, we have faults, we have flaws, we, we get things wrong, we do, we're not perfect angels. Incidentally, that's a good way to understand this. If we were, if we did have a free will, who among us wouldn't choose to do complete good all the time? But, but we do have these flaws. We're, we, you know, we don't have a free will, and, and because of that, we, um, we do things against each other, you know. Um, things that we can't help, obviously, because we are compelled. You know, if you've watched other shows, you'll understand exactly how or why. But, um, but so, yeah, we're like these programmed beings, and, and we do things against each other. And, you know, the irony is that until now, the universe has had us blame each other, ascribe accountability to each other and, and, um, and fault. And that leads to conflict. It leads to aggression, hostility, vengeance and revenge. It leads to, to indictments and, and you know, wash, want, wanting. I mean, just this, I'm taping this uh, a couple of days after they um, killed Osama bin Laden. People were celebrating in the streets, um, partly, I think, because, like, you know, it's, it's a safer world. But another part was, like, you know, yeah, we got them. You know, it's kind of like a, kind of like a, um, a vengeance, you know, attitude. And, um, and, you know, this, this kind of attitude, um, it's pervasive. It's pervasive, you know, to the extent that we believe we have a free will, that's how we treat other people, you know. And naturally, we've had um, good, good countervailing teachings to that. For example, the Judeo-Christian, it's probably, I'm sure, yeah, it's probably common to all religions, all major religions, the idea of forgiveness. The idea is like in forgiveness, like you understand that everybody's imperfect, so so you know you you forgive, you know you forgive you, you uh, forgiving is kind of like a recognition that, that that the person you know couldn't do any better. The person is human. The person is flawed, you know. So and then that, that's but the idea behind forgiveness is that um, it's kind of done out of a virtue. You know, you're a good person to forgive. But you don't necessarily have to, whatever. Whereas, like, when you understand that that um, free will is an illusion, that there is no such thing as free will, then then all of a sudden um, there's no reason to forgive, you know, because there's no reason to indict to begin with. Okay. Um, so the idea is, yeah, the this this notion of free will is 
the foundation of our civilization and our personal lives and how would you know how would it change what would our world be like to overcome this illusion all right let's think of it in terms of let's think of it in terms of ourselves first of all okay under the free will um, illusion we do something good hey we're great you know we're better than other people we you know we're, we're like we become arrogant prideful you know, we, we compare ourselves to others. We, we think we're special, you know, and what does that do? That just like, that separates others from us. It separates us from others. It's just like, it, it's a separation between people. It's, a, it's that kind of comparison. Um, when we do something wrong, what do we do? We'll blame ourselves. And, um, and a lot, you know, and, you know, if, if we blame ourselves, we, we said, all right, I'm bad. I did something bad. If I did something bad, I deserve to suffer. I deserve to, to be punished. And very often we'll punish ourselves, if not, you know, through some more direct, some more comprehensive means, just through the, the guilt. We will feel a guilt. We'll feel the pain of guilt that we've done something wrong. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not asserting that we should, like, kind of um, overcome this conscience that we have, because certainly the, the, the understanding of what's right and wrong is good, but that the, the, the idea of punishing, you know, that, that because we did something wrong, we deserve punishment, that's something that, um, that's our current understanding. And as we transcend the illusion of free will, um, we can expect to be much more kind to ourselves. You know, we, um, you know, as, as with, with the arrogance, with the pride, as we overcome the illusion of free will, we will be much more humble. We won't see ourselves as better than other people, you know. In any, I mean, like, we might have a better skill, we might be able to do something better, but it's not up to us in any way. You know, it's, com it's completely faded. We had nothing to say in it. It's just how God or the universe is using us. Okay? And, um, and so, yeah, again, with, when we do things wrong, fine, we might say to ourselves, well, you know, um, for, for our own best interest, it's good when we don't do th things that are wrong because nature tends to reward and punish us according to um, how we do. I mean, sometimes that's not so very complete, but... Um, but that seems the way. So the idea is we can, we can like, by transcending the illusion of free will, we can be kinder to ourselves. We can recognize that we did things wrong, but not necessarily have to, um, have to um, punish ourselves. Okay, then, then we look at this from the perspective of our friends, you know, our family, people who we're, we're close to. Um, no, oh, no, no. Let's let's go all through also the the other two um, factors. The idea of envy. Um, we as people, when we um, see other people who do something really good, whatever, uh, we might tend to envy them. Might say, "Wow, these people are like so much better," you know. And the problem with that, you know, it's 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 derived from the illusion of free will. We we say, "Well, they freely." you know, chose to do what they did. They deserve the credit. You know, they're, they're so much better in some way because of it. And the problem with that is, like, it demeans us. It lowers, it devalues us. And so naturally, as we transcend the illusion of free will, we, we kind of restore an egalitarianism, a, an equality, a true equality to all of us. Some of us may be more lucky in certain ways than others, but it's not in any way attributable to their free will, to their decision to, to do or whatever. Um, and uh, let's see, there's, there's one more. The, the last, um, let's see, there's envy, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> the, uh, there's envy, blame, um, arrogance, and guilt, and I guess we've covered them. Um, yeah, all right, so like, but in terms of um, how we relate to others, how we relate to our friends, our, our family and all, um, you know, our conflicts, our conf conflicts happen because we ascribe free will to others. You know, somebody does something that we consider inconsiderate, 
and um, we will um, we will you know we will blame them you know if somebody's doing something that's disturbing you know we will we'll just you know we'll say well you know this person's evil this person's bad you know he's doing something wrong and um, and you know naturally when when we take that attitude they get defensive and you you get this conflict happening and that's the problem with ascribing free will when um, when we recognize that um, that we don't have a free will the free will is an illusion when people do things that are wrong that are inconsiderate or whatever we may be we may be upset that um, that you know the universe has caused that to happen but we won't necessarily be upset at the person we'll recognize that person had no choice to be the way they were you know that's the way fate you know fated them to be and to the extent we have that perspective we can um, maintain a good relationship with each other you know whether it's like our spouse children friends you know work co-workers whatever okay <laughs> um, and again you know with um, with other people the same applies you know that um, um, with arrogance and all. all right so the idea is like I, I want to like you know I think you understand now why you know the the illusion of free will is, is, is harmful and um, and how overcoming it can help but like let's let's kind of like explore what this will mean to the world, why, why I, I describe this as an evolutionary leap, okay? Um, first, you know, we've got the, the basic fundamental fact about human will completely wrong, okay? We're completely wrong about it. We're, we're ascribing, you know, authorship to ourselves when we're, we're, we're completely the actor. Um, to the extent that we get it right, our whole psychology is going to change. Our whole mind, our whole consciousness is going to change. You know, and you know, it's hard to predict exactly how because it's so surreal. It's so surreal to imagine that like this life is really a movie, that that everything that's, that's happening is happening that because it's compelled to happen because like we're we're just going along for the ride that we're we're experiencing life rather than like making the decisions that make it happen. You know, the freely will decisions. Um, it's all right. For example, with with the criminal justice system. Right now, we've got a lot of people in jails and, and prisons all over the world, and the the sad truth is they're as innocent as any one of us. Uh, Bin Laden, whoever you, you know, anyone, um, they were completely compelled to do what they did. They had no choice in the matter. So so naturally, we 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 will tend to want to preserve um, law and order in the world. You know, we can't have people just doing whatever they do, but to the extent that we transcend the illusion of free will, we're going to be, we're going to be seeing them, and they'll be seeing themselves and us in a completely different way. In other words, like, we will be actually, like, when a, when a police officer or a judge or when we as society look upon somebody who's done something wrong, we're not going to say, oh, that person's evil, you know, that person deserves to, to, to suffer, um, deserves to be punished. We're going to say, well, geez, it, it's really unfortunate, um, you know, for that person. That person was fated to do that, and we may have to separate that person. We may have to take certain measures. But when we're relating to that person, you know, to the extent that we fully integrate this, we're not going to be condemning that person. We're going to, you know, and that person will know that. That person who also understands that that free will is an illusion will understand. That, that it wasn't his fault. Because again, a lot of, as we, we described before, a lot of the pain of the illusion of free will comes from self-blame. So, um, so yeah, our criminal justice system would, would be um, dramatically changed for, for the better, for, you know, make a much more uh, compassionate world. Um, religion actually is going to have to um, change dramatically because um, the concept of free will was actually created by um, St. Augustine at around 380 A.D. He, um, he was grappling with the, um, the notion of evil, and since according to Christianity, Judaism, whatever, God's supposed to be good, all good, then 
he was trying to explain, well, how could there be evil in the world? So, you know, his answer was, well, if it's not God's fault, it has to be the fault of man. And so he coined the term free will. He wrote this book, De Libro Arbitrero. And, and so, you know, we've, we've We've, the religion, you know, religion, especially with con condemning people to, well, to hell or, you know, having people go to heaven, the whole foundation of religion, of most traditional religions now, is, is founded on the premise of free will. So that's one thing that will we'll, we'll have to change. You know, no longer will, the, um, will religion, you know, call a person evil. They, they, they might refer to an act as evil, but the person will always be innocent. You know, um, and that'll be understood. That'll be recognized. So, so you know, once, once that happens, it's no longer justifiable to um, to have the belief that some of us go to heaven, some of us go to hell. Now, that that no longer makes any sense. That you know, so you know, God willing, we will have the belief that um, that we all go to heaven. I mean, that's you know, since we, you know, the idea is we we don't know to begin with. So that seems to be the most the kindest, um, the most optimistic belief. Um, our, our educational system is going to change because um, right now we don't really teach kids the way we could, like to be as happy as they could, to be as good as they could, because like with the notion of free will comes the idea that, well, it doesn't really matter what we teach them about that kind of stuff as kids because like when they grow older, they have a free will. They can completely ignore that, that teaching. So it's just a waste, waste of resources. So like to the extent that we fully understand that, um, that our wills are causal, that you know, free will is an illusion, we will understand how important it is to, uh, to, um, to educate our kids in the, in the best way, in the right way, to, to spend um, the proper resources, to consider it as important as it really is. Because the idea is like what we put into them is what, we'll, what they will express as adults. That's, you know, that's the, the easiest way to understand that. Um, it will, you know, the, the, evidence, the evidence for, um, for the idea that we don't have a free will is just like accumulating in the sciences and neuroscience and psychology and, and philosophy. The logical arguments against free will have been understood for, for several hundreds of years. You know, the idea of causality and the unconscious. And... Um, so as that happens, you know, we will, we'll, it'll, it'll go through stages, all right? Right now, a major milestone happened a couple of weeks ago when the, the um, weekly science magazine, New Scientist, published a cover story on the nature of human will, and the title was Free Will, The Illusion We Can't Live Without. And the reason that's a milestone is because in the past, when magazines covered free will first it was never a cover story okay it was always like you know some kind of feature or whatever probably did, didn't get much attention but the second very important fact of this um article this cover story was that it accepted the premise that free will is an illusion you know the title again was free will the illusion we can't live without so the idea actually behind that is that you know well no so anyway, that, um, what, what will happen is more of those articles are going to come out, you know, in science magazines initially, you know, Scientific American, Psychology Today, uh, the various, you know, science weeklies and monthlies. And then we'll begin to think about it a lot more. And we'll begin to think of how, you know, it relates to our personal lives. And um, as we begin to think about it, then this is going to get into um, the the more popular magazines, you know, um, and it'll it'll get into the legal system, um, it'll get into the educational system. Like, even though even though in our educational system today we we teach our kids that that um, that our our behavior is the complete result of nature and nurture. We don't go beyond that. We don't say, well, because of that, that means we don't have a free will. But, you know, as we begin to understand that, that will be the standard teaching. That'll be the way, you know, kids are taught. That's the way we're all taught. So what'll be the outcome of that? On a personal level, you know, you have two people having some kind of disagreement. It's not going to be as they're competing with each other. They're not going to be like in conflict, one against the other. It's going to be both on the same side, trying to figure out why fate is, is like pitting them against each other, why fate is having one aggress against the, the other or doing something the other considers wrong. 
Um, and naturally, as all, thing, as all these things take place, there's going to be a profound, substantial change in our human consciousness. It will be, you know, the way I start the show, it's a quote by philosopher John Searle, um, the idea of free will being an illusion is a greater revolution in our thinking than Einstein and Freud and, um, no, not Freud, Copernicus, <laughs> Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, Darwin, you know, um, it's, it's major. It'll, it'll be the, the most major, substantial change in the world, in our consciousness, ever. And, um, you know, I have to say, actually, since, since the, um, the idea of life isn't to understand that we don't have a free will, and understanding that don't have, we don't have a free will has its utility because it, um, it helps us create a happier world, Ultimately, I think that'll be another major change. <laughs> the idea that um, as we um, become aware that we don't have a free will and you know, we start structuring a society based on, on that understanding, we'll recognize that happiness is the main goal of our life and that'll be a second kind of like a consciousness uh, shifting evolutionary change in our world. So, but, but yeah, absolutely, from, from a very fundamental level in how we pursue perceive the very nature of reality. Um, it may happen in 10 years, it, it'll probably certainly happen within the next 20 years because that's how fast the um, progress is going on this. And also the challenges we have, like climate change, demand such massive cooperation between us as individuals and countries that in a certain sense we have no choice but to understand, to you know, shift our understanding of who we are in relation to the world. Okay, I hope you understand how you know, the, um, about this leave. I'll see you, I'll see you soon. <laughs>